Hello students, today we will discuss about the umbilical ligaments. Now as you know that there are three umbilical ligament, one is known as median umbilical ligament and there are two pairs of the medial and lateral umbilical ligament. Now right now in this image you can see this is the anterior abdominal wall and in the center you can see the rectus sheath anterior wall and that is covering your rectus abdominis. Now when you will see the umbilical ligament you will find these umbilical ligament in the posterior part of anterior abdominal wall or we can see that these umbilical ligament actually plasters the posterior surface of anterior abdominal wall. So now if this is your empty anterior abdominal wall cavity and suppose I am entered inside this cavity from the posterior side. So most anteriorly you are able to see this white color layer. This is fascia transverse cellis and you know that the fascia transverse cellis is the innermost covering and deep to that we have two more layers that is extra peritoneal fat and parietal peritoneum. So now here you can see in this 
uh, image right now there is a uh, green color shadow which you are able to see now this is actually the fascia transfer cellis and deep to that in the lower part here you can appreciate that there is a border is seen and this is actually the border which is the free border of your rectus abdominis posterior wall which is actually known as the arcuate line so suppose if i will re uh, remove or hide this fascia transfer cellis then now you can very well see this arcuate line and below the arcuate line the area uh, this area is actually not covered by the fascia transfer cellis so now it is very clear to you that the fascia transfer cellis is in direct contact with the rectus abdominis below the arcuate line and above the arcuate line this area is actually covered by the posterior layer of rectus sheath followed by the fascia transfer cellis now when we will talk about the three ligaments so you have to first see the median umbilical ligament and that median umbilical ligament comes from the apex of urinary bladder so again this is your anterior abdominal wall and if you will rotate this and you will enter inside the abdominal cavity from the posterior side now you can see there is a organ visible in the pelvis and that is your urinary bladder now from the urinary bladder there is a connection up to the umbilicus and this is here is a urecus now this green color band which is now visible here is actually the urecus and if this urecus will not obliterate it will lead to the leakage of the urine through the umbilicus and that is termed as a urinary fistula but what will happen in adults that this urecus is no more uh, having any kind of connection and it fibrosed and it is going to form your median umbilical ligament now when you will see the two more structures which are right and left side of this green band and that is actually your obliterated umbilical arteries and those arteries will also approach to this same point of the umbilicus so now let's draw these two umbilical arteries now here you can see now that there are two white bands appear on both the side of this midline urecus now if you will see the arteries these are actually arising from this point this is one side and this is the another side now these are arteries which are carrying the deoxygenated blood in case of intrauterine life and that blood will enter into the umbilical cord and these branches are the branches of internal iliac artery in case of the adult so these two arteries which are again you can see here are of right and left side and these again obliterated in case of the adults and these are again responsible for the formation of the two peritoneal folds which are known as right and left medial umbilical ligament so now you can see there are three structures now the uh, one pair of the red color structures again you can see appear in this uh, part of the video and here you can see that there is a one artery on the one side and there is a another artery on the opposite side so these are the inferior epigastric arteries and these inferior epigastric arteries are the branches of external iliac artery the important thing which you have to understand that these arteries are entering here into the posterior wall of the rectus sheath and they are passing deep to the rectus sheath through this arcuate line and they will make an anastomosis with the branches which are coming from the superior side that is superior epigastric artery in the same layer so now if you will place this fascia transfer cellis again now you can see the structures are not visible particularly the medial and median umbilical ligament except these two arteries so now from the above view you can see that this is your artery and just on the lateral to the artery here you can see this small foramen or the opening these are actually your deep inguinal uh, ring 
So this is very important question for your exam that what is the relation of the deep inguinal ring and the inferior epigastric artery. So you have to understand that the inferior epigastric arteries are just medially placed to the ring. So this is very important thing to identify the deep inguinal ring during the surgery of inguinal hernias. Now we are having the three structures one pair of artery, one pair of obliterated artery and single urecus. And all these five structures are actually very closely lies on the posterior side of anteriobdominal wall or you can see that they are actually plasters the posterior surface. Now if we will place the peritoneum inside, you know that deep to the fascia transversalis you are having the extra peritoneal fat and peritoneum. So now we have placed the parietal peritoneum in its own position. So because of that placement now you can see the lower border is showing the folds. Now where are the folds? Now this is the one fold you can see here. This is the another fold you can see here and this is the midline fold. In the same way you will have the fold on the opposite side. So there are five folds appear in on the peritoneum. So now if you will see from the inner side of abdominal cavity you will find the five folds. So these are the folds which are labeled as a umbilical folds or umbilical ligament. So basically umbilical ligaments are nothing but these are the umbilical folds and these folds develop because of the presence of underlying structures. And what are the underlying structures? If you will talking, if you you are uh, dealing with this lateral part, then the underlying structure is inferior epigastric. If you are talking about this fold, then it is your obliterated umbilical artery. And if you are talking about this midline single fold, then it is obliterated urethras. Now there is one more very important thing to understand that if you will see. In the lower part there is a triangle is visible. Now where is this triangle? Now see this is your lateral border of rectus abdominis muscle and there is a, another thing is visible and this is here and this is your lateral umbilical ligament or you can say the uh, inferior epigastric artery. So this triangle is here. Now the base of triangle is formed by the inguinal ligament which will come here. So inguinal ligament is forming the base, the artery is forming the lateral boundary and rectus abdominis is forming the medial boundary. Now this is known as Heschel back triangle and the important thing which you have to keep in mind here that this triangle is lies just medial to the, your deep inguinal ring. So this is your deep ring. So my dear friends, you have to keep this thing in mind that whenever you are talking about the Heschel back triangle, it is actually medial to your deep ring and this is bounded one side by your lateral umbilical ligament and the medial boundary is formed by the this border of rectus abdominis. So in nutshell at the end of this video now I hope it is very clear to you if you want to uh, see your uh, five umbilical ligament you have to actually keep this thing in mind that these ligaments are present on entry of no wall but for uh, uh, approaching these ligament you have to go very deep till the peritoneum because these are the peritoneal folds and here right now in this image we are seeing these folds through the uh, abdominal cavity. So we have uh, removed the posterior surface and we entered into the abdominal cavity. Suppose you are sitting inside the abdominal cavity and you are seeing the anterior abdominal wall from posterior side. So this is what is actually the placement of these five ligament, midline ligament, then you will have the two lat uh, side by side ligament and most laterally placed uh, lateral ligament. Clear? So this is what about the five ligaments which are known as umbilical ligaments and they are actually placed below the umbilicus and they are known as median umbilical ligament one pair of medial umbilical ligament and the one pair of lateral umbilical ligament. So this is all for today's session. Thank you.